Hey everyone, welcome back to Heroes Workshop. This is Stealth. Today's project, we're going to be working on a Shredder helmet from the 1990 movie Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I 3D modeled the helmet in Blender. I did it in low poly without uh, any thick details, which is perfect for foam Peppacura. Once the model was done, I imported it into Peppacura Designer. The Peppacura foam file link is in the description if you'd like to get it and build your own. Before I print the model, I removed the texture. It's the button next to the light bulb you see here. That way you don't waste ink. Once I did that, then I changed the scale to my head width. So I added, the helmet's pretty wide, so I uh, set it to 10.5 uh, inches wide. And then once that was done, I printed it and then I got started. So then I simply just cut out all the templates with my hobby knife. You can use scissors or utility knife, whatever you have. And then I take the templates and I close the seams up. I just use some packing tape. Uh, this technique is really great for reducing seams on your foam. Anything that you can reduce seams, the better. I cover this technique in a video up in the top right, and it's also linked in the description. I use it many times, and it's been working great. Another tip is to merge templates and tape them together to create bigger templates before you trace them onto the foam. I cover this tip in another video that's gonna pop up in the top right, and I'll also link it in the description. Then you transfer the templates to the foam. Remember to flip the templates to get the other side. Remember to merge the templates as I'm doing here so you can get a larger piece. Once all the templates are traced out, it's time to take a hobby knife or utility knife and refer to the Peppercrew designer to see the angles of each piece and then you set your angled cuts uh, accordingly and then you should be good to go for gluing. Some of the parts are going to require heat shaping so use a heat gun and something round. I use a styrofoam ball to get the curve. Refer to the Peppercore designer to see what kind of pieces have a rounded shape. And then I apply contact cement on both sides where the seams are going to connect. And I apply a thin coat of contact cement and I wait for that to get tacky before I start to glue everything together. So I use a rotary tool with a sanding bit and I sanded down the edges on the dome of the helmet into kind of like a point on both sides. Then I use a palm sander to sand some of the seams on the base of the helmet and around the helmet like the mouth guard and the top uh, detail area. For the mesh detail I tried to use some puffy paint to make like a web pattern but it didn't go so well. Uh, the bottle was uh, not cooperating so I had to abandon that and just wipe all the paint down. Somebody suggested that I use hot glue. I tested it out on a piece of scrap foam. Looked good. So then I applied that to the entire helmet base. I did it in a web-like pattern. It's not perfect, I kind of rushed it. Uh, take your time with it and get a better result than I did. Before you can paint the foam, you have to seal it. So I use a PVA glue mixed with water. I use a foam brush to apply it. Make sure you get in all the crevices of the web detail and use a dabbing technique to make sure it soaks in there. I primed the helmet with a Vallejo surface primer and I sprayed on with a, a spray gun and I just put one coat. Remember to paint a little bit of the inside of the helmet, especially on the inside edge. That way when you're wearing it, they're not seeing unpainted foam on the inside. Before I could paint, I had to mix up a custom brown color, and for the silver, I just used an acrylic silver metallic that I had laying around. And I painted the helmet until I got a nice coverage, probably around two coats for each silver and the brown. For the trim that's on the helmet here, I painted it by hand in a gunmetal paint that I had pre-mixed from another project. I used a cheaper acrylic black and I mixed it with water. I watered it down a lot 
and I'm going to be doing a wash. I just take a brush and I just paint it on. You can see it dripping. It's not thick enough to hold a vertical surface. This is just to get into the crevices. And then I take a paper towel and I wipe off and I dab to get into the web area just so it's not so dark. You can also remove some if you think it's too dark with a little bit of water. I also did it for the metallic parts, but I didn't want too much, so I went over it with some water to wipe off a little bit of the excess black. I took some silver metallic paint, and I used a stiff brush, and I dried it on a paper towel. I did a dry brushing technique. I just kind of lightly went over the edges of the web detail to really bring them out and just give uh, the base of the helmet a more metallic look and a more weathered finish. And it looks really good with the the black wash effect. For the face mask mesh, I used a sports bag material. I did this at the Goblin Slayer helmet. I just cut it to shape and I super glued it into place. To easily wear the face mask, I just used some of this elastic material. It's for clothing. And I used contact cement, put it on both sides, and put it on both ends of the elastic and simply glued it in. After that was done, I glued on the top detail to the base of the helmet, and then it was complete. The Shredder helmet from the 1990 film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If you want to build your own, the Foam Pepper Cooler file link is in the description. I had a lot of fun making this helmet. It brought a lot of uh, old childhood memories. I love this movie. I actually watched part one and two when I was making this. What are your favorite quotes from the movie? Please comment down below, I'd love to hear it. If you'd like to help Heroes Workshop directly, please remember to like the video. Please subscribe and hit the bell so never miss another update. This is Stealth from Heroes Workshop and I'll be back soon with another project.